Welcome everyone to a special installment of Bazelli's TV, the most interesting wine channel on the internet. Why are we the most interesting wine channel on the internet? Because we consider wine a food. Of course, everyone recognizes Holly Rocco Ferracci <laughs> of Republic National Distributing Company, a perennial special guest on our show who has been such an asset um, since the inception. And so Holly also introduced us in episode five to someone who you may also recognize at this table, Carly Maher of Trinqueros Heritage Collection. <laughs> Carly shined in that episode. She lucidly traced the genesis of cougar juice for you guys. And I'm still getting emails from my son's school about that episode. We broke over a thousand views. We did break over a thousand views Shattered today. Shattered the internet. We did. We broke the internet Kim K style. It was important to explain was. the difference between certain Chardonnays and, yeah. and cougar juice. Yeah, yeah my, my son's third grade teacher agrees with you. But... <laughs> But somehow these ladies have upped the ante today for you guys. Um, you better smash that like button today. I'm not playing. Holly and I will cancel this show <laughs> because we are graced today. We have the distinct pleasure of hosting Carlo Trinquero, my man, one of the hottest, youngest stars in the California wine game. By the end of this episode, you'll also understand that he's one of the most humblest too. Great guy, hailing from an Italian founding family, of course, Trincaro. You know that I'm shamelessly biased about Italian winemakers and Italian wines, and I don't care. <laughs> so that's why we're having Carly back, and that's why, of course, we invited Carlo here today. Carlo, love you, bro. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Welcome you. to the show. As always, um, I always start out... We know this is a family business for you. For, for you, I mean, your name is Carlo Trincaro. His name's on this bottle. Wait, this is Mary's. Okay, his name is on this. Last name, yeah. His last name is on this bottle. His namesake. <laughs> but what was your journey into the family business? We all really want to know. I mean, I first of all, thank you for having me. This is really cool. I mean, Carly, I'm I'm curious to watch that video that you did. <laughs> Just, I haven't seen it yet. Um, but I got into the industry. Um, Never, I was never forced. I mean, I worked at the winery as a kid growing up, doing everything from, like, the mail um, to cleaning tanks to whatever, you know, anybody under 18 could legally do or get in trouble for. So, um, And um, I went to college, actually, for exercise science and kinesiology. I had no intention of being in the wine industry because I played sports all the way through college, and I actually worked for Nike at the time. It was kind of cool. And... I started going back to the uh, home to, like, random tastings. You know, I'd be back for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go to a wine tasting. Why not? Wait. You know, we get free tickets to this thing. Might as well go. And as I started to go back to more and more, I started to realize how lucky and how special what uh, the industry that my family's in and that I'm a part of it. And because I, I went out to, you know, Sacramento State and stuff, and I'm talking to some of my fellow football player guys. I was like, what's your family doing? Like, oh, you know, construction, da-da. And I was like, you guys don't do wine? <laughs> what do you mean? You guys don't have a winery kind of thing? Because, I mean, I grew up with, the, you know, the Harlands, the Mondavis. I mean, everybody. It's just, it sounds crazy, but, I mean, those are the same guys, you know, we got in trouble with, you know, after school and high school and stuff. So um, <laughs> it was just the norm. And once I realized that what these two people did – my grandparents, it was, it was, it was kind of, uh, you know, the light bulb went off. I got to do something. I can't let all their hard work and what they've done, you know, disappear. So um, I decided to get a job. I started in the vineyards working in, at this winery, actually doing harvest, which is, we call it a cellar rat. So you get to do everything from actually help make the wine to like, Clean the bathrooms, so it's it's a very wide range of you know. Like I said, humbling <laughs> experience. Okay. Yeah, and so I I did that, and I said I want to do sales. I want to sell the wine. I want to go tell our story. So I went to my dad, and I said, Hey, all right, I'm ready to do sales. He goes, You don't have a resume. I was like, Yeah, I do. I worked at Harvest. He goes, You know, you have no sales experience. And I'm like, What are you trying to say? He's like, Go get a job. Go get a job. I'm like, <laughs> Okay. He's. I was like, Well, ask one of the distributors if they need someone. He's like. All right, I'll put in a good word for you. So do you know what a merchandiser is? Yes. That's where I started. I was a merchandiser for Young's Market. I did uh, like CVS's, the drug channel, um, and then I also did grocery. So, And I, I was changing the world in my own mind with that box cutter. I mean, that's <laughs> setting up displays, throwing loads, getting there at 3, 4 in the morning, trying to yeah. beat the other reps there to like get you know some floor space. And then I, was, um, I worked there for four years. I became an actual sales rep for off-premise uh, grocery. And then I did on-premise as Within well. Within Trincaro. 
No, this is for our distributor. This I is for your for distributor. No. You did not work for it because mm-hmm. the d- distributor typically does the merchandising. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, for so, our, for our viewership. Okay. Yeah, so I worked at the distributor for four and a half years, and during that time, I was building a brand called Taken. And when I partnered Taken with my family, the ABC realized that I was part of two suppliers as well as a distributor, and they were like, "You can't be <laughs> in two of the three just like tiers." And then my dad's like, "All right." We, we have a spot for you. You can do, you know, sales for our imports. And that's when I first came on uh, for the family. So now I'm here. So you had a lot of grocery exposure. Yeah. Yeah. I did. And that's really funny because, I mean, you some of your brands, I mean, we could go down the list. I mean, when it comes to branding, Menage a Trois, Sutter Home, Bravia, Nyers, Mason, Joel Gott, Trincaro, Taken. Uh, what am I missing here, Carly? Uh, about a thousand. Yes. Uh, Folia yes. Du, complicated. Uh, Total Trincaro, yes. Napa Sellers, on fire, by the way. T- Tara Dior, these all have a lot of grocery exposure, but what is so interesting. Oh, no, they don't. It's not all of them. Not, not all of them. Not all of You're them. You're talking about like Menage a Trois. Menage a Trois. So yeah. you have these massive brands that have a lot of grocery exposure, but then you have these other brands which don't, and they have this Italian sensibility to them. There, yeah, there's quite a few brands we have that – you're only going to find in restaurants, wine shops. Um, when I worked at the distributor, I actually worked on the other side of the book. So I didn't even sell my family's brands. My biggest supplier was Brown Foreman. So yeah. that's who I focused on. Um, so I didn't even sell her products. But if you want to look at our portfolio, we have a very large portfolio. It's almost 60 brands. And those, some of those are private labels for things like Target um, and some of the Kroger's that are obviously the biggest brands, Setter Home, Minaj. Those are the ones you're going to see just about everywhere. Yeah, by the way, um, Trincaro and Sutter Home, guys. Well, that's, so. yeah, that's, where we got, that's where we got the start. Yeah. And then we learned from Carly about the Zin incident. So, uh, it's the white Zin incident. It's, a, it's incident. The white, the white Zin incident. incident. Thank I'm you for correcting. I'm trying correct. to make that a thing. But, but that you was. keep trying. No, no, no. Can I tell you that was an exam question for when I got my WSU? T3, there was a, a question because the Brits love their like white zin and there was a they do it's big and so there was a question about white zin so I told the entire Trincaro story yes. and how that happened and I passed yes. <laughs> someone watches our show okay that's great <laughs> no that's great but um, the Trincaro story is very compelling um, two Italian guys Migrate from. Should we, should we have Carla tell it? No, 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 no. I was gonna uh, Carla. No, 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 it's I'm just, foreshadowing. Oh, okay. I'm foreshadowing. <laughs> Two Italian guys migrate from New York, somehow stumble upon Cali. Yes, Carly, we're gonna let Carla tell it. <laughs> I was like, this is I was like, okay, cool, let's do this. They somehow migrate to Cali, and now Carla's gonna take over. Yeah. So um, my grandfather, he's my family's from San Martinotto, which is a small village outside of Asti. So it's northern Italy. It's you blink, you'll drive by it. So you guys didn't need to come here. You guys were already rich. <laughs> no, no, no. Because <laughs> the Southern Italians were the working class. I'm Southern Italian. No, Same I wouldn't here. say that. Northern, I mean, you guys. Like came. how north? Piedmontese? Yes. Yeah. That's north. That's, That's north. pretty north. That's right. So, so you, you guys go. were skiing. No. You were rich. No, no, you could really. afford skis. <laughs> No. I didn't so know we were going to have a northern Italian, southern Italian. It's a big out. thing. Yeah, it's a big out. thing. But no, okay. I'm sorry, Carla. Okay. Right. People like you. Paisan. Paisan. Yeah, Paisan. Well, I'll give you that one. But you know, you know. You got a napkin? <laughs> See what? See, Carly, what you started? Oh, no, so uh, he, he was only 20 and he left Italy. And that was in 1922 because he came through Ellis Island in 23. So back then, Italy not exactly a friendly place, especially for the farmers. And that's yeah. what he was up there. And it was, it was, frankly, it was dangerous. I've been back to that same village where he grew up. And I thought in my head, I'm like, why the hell did he ever leave? I mean, it's gorgeous. You're out in, you know, Piedmont country. But once again, the times were a little different. So he com- comes to America with his brother, my gr- uh, great uncle John. And by the way, they brought with them a vermouth recipe that we make today. So that recipe is... Almost 200 years old. But kind of new to the market. Brand new to the market. Yeah, my we, have, uncle, we have it here. Yeah, my uncle never released it. He wouldn't, He doesn't, I don't even know it. He wouldn't tell me. He tried to sell it to me. 
200 year old <laughs> recipe just <laughs> dropped on the market guys this will be available on casewinelife.com as well i mean we already we already support trincaro from day one uh, your former winemaker mad love for him uh, mario monticelli my first wine tasting was, was, yeah, with, was mario with mario monticelli yeah. they're like do you want to host it i was like yeah, yeah. Top, it was awesome. <laughs> and then they yeah. called they're like yeah. carlos coming to town i'm like yeah <laughs> okay so sorry okay no, no. so your great uncle comes and what happens yeah, with yeah. my grandfather and so they come to new york and he's a becomes a bartender because he knew how to make wine sparkling wine um he was actually a bartender at the baltazar hotel which is now the waldorf so he was that's where he met my nona mary they got married she's from napoli area like in central italy uh-huh. and um they got married they had three kids my dad aunt and uncle all born in new york and by that time he was well established because he remained a bartender through the 30s during prohibition at a speakeasy that he ran called the paradise club on the upper west side of new york um please tell me that's what you call your tasting room i okay so i tried (laughs) i tried i wanted to call the vip room the paradise club and my dad's like no and i was like why we get a neon sign (laughs) so dope oh my god they didn't go for it so they kind of just said okay carlo you can leave the meeting now (laughs) good idea i got your back thank you and um they you know they had an apartment they had a roof over their head and that generation that came through ellis island that really created the country we live in i mean that that is a win to have a roof over your head back then it was very very hard and so what does he do do he's got everything he could ever want what would you do you'd be you'd be happy you hang your hat on your accomplishments he threw it all away i would just hang my hat on my head but No, he sells everything. Sells everything because my great uncle John didn't stop in New York. He went all the way to California. So he calls my grandfather. And Italians, we are very convincing, or at least we think we are. And <laughs> no, I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard that before. So he's like, "Oh, you got to come out to California. There's this gold rush of wine, and you know, you don't want to live in the big city. It's no place to raise a family. Come out to the country. We have our own winery, just like in you know Italy." So. My grandfather turns to my Nona, kind of spins it off even more. <laughs> and my Nona's thinking, you know, Italian wine country, the rolling hills of Tuscany or up in Piedmont. She's like, that sounds great. Has anybody ever seen a picture of Napa Valley in 1948? No. Go to the middle of Nebraska, okay, where there's nobody. Take a picture, and that's what it looked like. The number one crop was, like, walnuts. Number two was wheat. Number three was soy. That picture is going to be edited in, folks, yes. so don't worry. <laughs> I mean, it, the vineyards were an afterthought. There was only five families there making wine. And so my grandfather convinces my Nona to sell the apartment, which was a block from Central Park, sell everything they own. They put three kids. You sold that apartment? That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they probably sold it for like two grand or something. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. No. Water under the bridge. <laughs> Water under the bridge, Carly. Okay. Moving right along. Okay. Um, there's a hotel there now, so but it's yeah. But, um, uh, so he takes all three kids and his wife, puts them on a train, goes from New York. Can you imagine putting three kids under the age of ten on a train? Oh yeah. From New York to California, no. Um, I got two under two, and I, I won't even take them to the grocery store. Oh wow. so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. So he what moves them out there, and back then there was no road actually to get up to St. Lena or Calistoga. It was just the railroad, and so they pull up. They got the rail, uh, the train pull up right in front of uh, Setter Home. That's where the stop used to be. And they get out, and my grandfather goes, look, this is our future. And there's a barn. It's an abandoned, bankrupt winery called Setter Home that was, you know, empty from Prohibition. And it's just this wood, old barn. And she's like, this is it. This is our future. My Nona collapsed. She drops to her knees. My uncle remembers this vividly because he was 10. She starts bawling. And he's like, what? What's the problem? I mean, she left an elegant life, a secure life in New York for some cow town mm. and some crazy old man that's convinced her that there's a future in an old wood barn. Because a bartender at the Waldorf, that at that time was you professional. Were very professional. Yeah, very professional. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He, he, was, he could have stayed there. I mean, we wouldn't be here. I'd be in New York doing some <laughs> stupid, like, probably be barred back. <laughs> No, you could have sold that apartment that, yeah. that they lived in for a lot of money and lived in New York. And you bought a you know, nice you know, condo in Brooklyn or something. <laughs> and then I love this nuanced story. Thank, now I know why Carla. Of course we wanted Carla to tell this origin story. I mean, what, what's there not to love? But I also understand, so you bought this joint and you couldn't afford paint. So, yeah. So, do you know how much he purchased Setter Home for? How much? $5,000. Wow. I mean, that's a lot of money back then, but... 
if you look at the original picture, which I have at my house, the roof, the entire roof of the whole winery said Sutter Home on top of it because the Sutters used to own it. It was built originally in 1883. And he had no money left. And my grandfather was frugal. And I'll tell you a few stories throughout this that you're going to... Relate to. Horrible. I've got frugal uncles and frugal. Yeah, it, Italians can be frugal. It's crazy. Are you going to eat that last Cheerio? Yeah. <laughs> the things he did were... You've heard that before. Oh, Are you no. eat that last Cheerio? It, it's one ways. Cheerio, dude. Calm down. Nothing <laughs> went down the drain. Exactly. Um, so uh, so they didn't have enough money to paint over the sign. So if he would have actually forked over, the, you know, the probably $12 for a can of paint, <laughs> you could have drank Trincaro White Zinfandel. But he didn't. So because of his, you know, business decision back then, we're now able to do this, the Trinker on Napa Valley tier, and have Sutter Home be our, you know, our big monster. It's in the grocery stores. It is what it is. And I know people, they laugh, oh, the white's in, white's in. You got to start somewhere. Yes. And what my uncle did, I, I'll kind of, you know, jump to that really quick, but what he did was he didn't tell the consumer what to drink. And back then, winemakers, we told you what to drink. You know, we were like, this is wine. This is what you like. This is Cabernet. If you don't like it, you're you're stupid. You Carly mentioned that, that you guys really listened to the consumer. It was well received, that yeah. white Zinfandel, even though Assam would throw it in the trash. No. <laughs> they're like, why, why are you making this? Because the reason it was made, it was made originally to make his Zinfandel. My uncle was a winemaker, which... The small lot Zinfandels were some of the highest scored out of Napa Valley back then. I mean, they were like, you know, Napa a was sweet wines back then. I mean, it was yeah. a lot okay. sweeter. Seven okay. Blanc okay. was different. It was sweet. They Dar yeah. Daryl Cordy was like, you know, signe some of that juice off your Zin to make it a little stronger, more robust, like a Primitivo. Because Daryl Cordy, you know, sidebar on him, if you want to know somebody who really, you know, shaped the wine world, this guy did. He, the stories he tells me, the people he used to hang out with that he br would bring together were, was absolutely epic i mean he knew everybody because his education level on wine was tenfold and anybody's in california at the time was he a winemaker so he owns a sandwich shop in sacramento <laughs> i can relate to that yeah and all the winemakers used to come in there no he was just the largest importer of european wine in the 50s 60s and 70s interesting in that area. okay all right so he he had the go-to spot his claim to fame what really put him on the map he was able to sell uh like 10 magnums of Chateau You Can back in the 50s or 60s at the age of like 18 to a client in Sacramento. His wine knowledge was just like out of this world. He's still alive today. He still wears his blue lab coat and he is at that grocery every single day. Wow. He sounds like the Gary V of that generation. Kind of. I, I don't know how, I didn't know him in his younger days. Gary's like, he is an amped up. He's go, go, go. But Daryl, I had lunch with him. Four and a half hours later, I have never felt so stupid about knowing about my own family and just like the Napa Valley. <laughs> but I love like, that. Telling me these things, I was like, really? That's what <laughs> happened? Like, I grew up like, what? No, like, but I love that you were absorbing the knowledge. I, I, I love that. And so and you're sharing it with us today. So that's, that's awesome. Now we know about Daryl Cordy. And so, yeah, yeah, he's, he is a, he is in the wine, uh, the Vintners Hall of Fame. And okay. He's not even a. <laughs> Okay, but you guys have made so many like right, shrewd decisions along the way. And so I'm a restaurateur, and you're only as good as really your last decision or last sale or something. But transactionally, you guys just have made every right decision. I mean, I'm looking at your, your, your book here. I mean, the names in your book, everyone wants these names. Montevina, like how did that come about? So Montevina was actually the second property we ever purchased. That's really cool. And that's, do you want to talk about where White Zin came from, where the whole Zinfandel thing, Amador County. Amador County. Yeah, so from 48 to about 60, I mean, it was really just set our home. And it was, we had two tanks in the back. We had a red tank, we had a white tank. And if you needed a Chablis, <laughs> we'd get you, go get you a Chablis. If you needed a Burgundy, we still have, like, because back then there was no TTB, there was no regulations. We had, like, set our home, like Bordeaux. It says it on the label and stuff. It's It's kind of funny, I mean... The French figured it out, and they called and said, mm, absolutely not. <laughs> but back then, it was the, it literally was the Wild West. My uncle would call, you know, Joe Heights, be like, hey, you got an extra barrel? And then they'd go to Louis Martini and borrow, like, something there, and then they'd head down to Robert Mondavi. It's just like, the things they tell me, I'm like, wait a second. You guys used to do what? My dad claims to be the first to recycle in that valley because they used to dumpster dive at Charles Krug, take the old glass, wash it, and reuse it. That's very Italian. I said I was like, that's almost stealing. That's not really <laughs> That's recycling. stealing, Dad. That's not <laughs> recycling anymore. Trash, so. 
But it, the, the Napa Valley for so long, it was just, it was a bunch of farmers just trying to make a living off wine. And then it just exploded, you know, with Chateau Montalena, Stag's Leap, so many, Robert Mondavi. I mean, the list goes on on some of the most iconic people in our industry. And the reality is, is they were just a bunch of farmers just having fun. Do you think the hedge fund guys that have come in recently have, have, what have they done for the culture? I think what, I mean, what people, if you want to get in the wine industry, come on in, I guess. Okay. That's fine. I'm not going to say you can't do something a certain way. The only thing that I would put my foot down is anybody who's in wine, just know why you get the opportunity to be in this industry. And that's it. I mean, I love the fact that the, you know, the Napa Valley has exploded. Do I miss the old quiet, you know, cow town San Lino that I grew up in a little bit? Yeah. Back when, you know, I didn't have a cell phone until I was senior in high school. I didn't I need one. I really Everybody's like there. <laughs> and there was phones with cords attached to walls. So, um, but it's, it's great to see our industry explode like this. It really is. I just want to make sure that everybody understands the people that really laid the groundwork aren't forgotten. And we just know that we get every opportunity from those, you know, that generation that came in the, you know, the forties, fifties, sixties, and even before that. So, and then you have so many Italian families that we can oh, yeah. really, uh, uh, appreciate or being at the forefront and making Napa what it is today. Absolutely. So who would you consider in this canon of Italian families? Of course, Trincaro, Franzia. Yeah, there's so, I mean, the Mandavi. list goes. Mandavi. Mandavi. And Delicato. Delicato. Mm -hmm. uh, there's um, a, I think there's one that starts with a G. I think there's a small Italian family that starts with a G and ends with an O. Gucci or no? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Gucci. <laughs> Who? Who? Uh, I don't know. I feel like am I allowed? Yeah, oh, Gallo. Oh, yeah. I said Gallo. Uh, no, you didn't. I did say Gallo. No. You? Yes. Mm -mm. No. I said Gallo. Oh, so no. we got we got yeah. Trincaro, Franzia, yeah. just, Indelicato, just a little just a small Gallo. <laughs> but, I mean, but we appreciate all the Italian Nicolini, heritage. You got Nicolini. Nicolini. We appreciate all this Italian yeah, heritage. Oh, yeah. Smart. Yeah, there you go. There's one. So this is not the Cali Cab Show, Carlo. Regrettably, I'm saying that, but also at the same time, Simultaneously, respectfully, this is not the Cali Cab Show. Why? Because we want, and Holly agrees, but she may be reticent at this point because she's hosting you in her house and she's the best host <laughs> yes. ever. And this Robert. spread, we can thank Holly for all the charcuterie, everything. I love it. Uh, she, also she's Italian. I'm also only, Italian. I'm the only not Italian here. Yeah. Thank you for letting me at this table. But, but she went to NYU, so I'm sure she. So, but. I want to say this, um, Carlo. Carlo. Carly has no wine down there. I, I don't. Okay, what, what would you like? We, we really need no, to no, fix what, that No, no, what would you like? I've been staring at her empty I'll glass this whole time. I'll do some, some sabi <laughs> bean. You said some sabi Yeah. It's so funny story about wine at the table. So when my grandfather lived in New York, um, my uncle vividly remembers them. He, they'd always play cards. And back then, it was my grandfather's cousins came. There was a lar very large Italian community, obviously, in New York, the Irish. They, I mean, they, they had their neighborhoods. And he would have the card, uh, the host all the card games, and he would have his jug of vermouth underneath. Jug. Jug. Because his favorite drink was a martini, and that's the only reason he made vermouth. A perfect and, martini. Yes. Yeah. And there was an instance no when he was there with his uh, one of his first cousins, and they were talking about the war. And my grandfather was in the uh, uh, the United States Air Force, and his cousin was in the Italian infantry. So they're talking about war stories, and they realized that he was bombing their troop at one point. And this dead, quiet silence went over the table. They looked at each other kind of like, oh, my God, we almost killed each other kind of thing. And they just like, my uncle remembers. for their Desert Eagle. No, he goes, <laughs> my uncle remembers, he goes, they just looked at each other and they go, okay. And they just dealt cards and nobody brought that up ever again. But it's kind of crazy that like. Respect. That, that even yeah. after all that, I mean, they, they knew, they were like, oh, I can't believe, probably thought like, why were we doing that? You know, it was crazy time. But, um, but yeah, my grandfather, he was the, um, the keeper of all the booze. He mm -hmm. was the, yeah, if he felt you had too much, you got no more. So, <laughs> so when we say this is not the Cali Cab Show, um, Carla, we are not directing that, of course, at Trincaro or Indelicato or Gallo or Franzia, because they've done so much. They brought all their Italian heritage and sensibility to winemaking, but we want people to broaden their palates. You are doing that with your heritage collection, I feel like. Yes. Am I wrong, or did you oh, lie to me? Oh, you're very right. I would love, <laughs> I would love to, for Carla to talk about, um, you know, how the Heritage Collection came about, because it's a really exciting... Awesome, because, yeah, that's one of the major themes of the show. Broaden your palette, and I think the Heritage Collection, I wasn't at that show, 
but I wanted to be. And you were there in spirit. I, I was there. In, I was there in spirit. Yeah. How, I need to see this. What is? <laughs> what is the? What can you tell us? The origin of this heritage collection that is doing so much um, for broadening people's palates. It's. I mean, in short, it's a lot more than that. That is one of the uh, one of the goals. But the biggest, I would say, underlining goal or the main, my whole inspiration behind this is. Wine was created by families. If you think about it, wine was made by families in any region to be enjoyed with family and friends. I mean, that's just what, you know, they did. Obviously, Italian wines were the best, northern, but. Um, <laughs> northern? <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. A lot of Brunellos come from the north, right? That's true. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> but there's, in our industry today, it's, it's so competitive. I mean, very, very competitive. And there's not a whole lot of family-owned companies. There's Gallup is the largest. We are the second. And I think I would say Jackson Family is yeah. probably third. And other than that, there's it's a lot of publicly traded companies that have kind of bought out the smaller families, whether they just didn't want to be in it anymore they, or they didn't have the succession or they got pushed out, whatever it may be. And I, being a part of a family, and I'm sure you know any other family winery could you know, agree with this, is... We don't want to lose where this industry came from. I think that having commercial, you know, whatever is fine. That's part of this country, your business. Congratulations. But going back to the whole thing, why do you get that opportunity? The family. So the, the Heritage Collection is a portfolio that's built of small, family-owned, only family-owned wineries that I want to shed light on. I mean, these families have worked tirelessly, maybe to produce 100 cases, and that's what puts food on their table, literally. So... They haven't had the opportunity to sell it in D.C., Texas, you know, California, New York, because the distribution world is a monster. I mean, my hat's off to the distributors and what they've done in the last 50 years. They're very successful. <laughs> We've been with R&DC longer than I've been alive. So um, Top 10 place to work in America. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a very competitive world. I mean, Holly, how many brands does R&DC sell? That's a very good question, but I feel like we're somewhere about six or seven thousand wines. Six or seven I don't know. thousand brands. I can't, I've lost track. <laughs> and that's that's wines. If you go into the spirit world, like it gets it's it's the nature of the beast. So how do you get a distributor like Republic National, a top ten place to work, amazing, to focus on you know a sixty case production out of Brunello or you know Rioja? They like. As a company, I can, I can help answer that. Yeah, it's yeah. the stories and the people who are behind them. Getting that into the distributor, I like the they can't. Granola. They can't. You know, the small, you know, family in Italy can't call RNDC and say, "Hey, we want to be picked up." RNDC, you know, okay, we'll get to you. I mean, we have a lot of things going on. There's a lot of irons in the fire. They're a large business, and rightfully so. Coming with us, the Heritage Collection, we act as you know their strong arm and bringing them into the distributor and say, hey, look at all these cool wines. And RNDC has the talent, they have the reps, and they have the accounts to sell the best wine in the world. It's just getting it in front of them, and that's what we're trying to do is shedding light on those families that work so hard and bringing those little small production wines to people everywhere so their stories, exactly, Holly, are told. Yeah, absolutely. Have a, we have a little, have a little visitor. visitor. So this is a very cat-friendly <laughs> show. And, of course, the cat <laughs> wants... <laughs> the, I thought I literally... So the cat this. probably wants Carlo's signature, too. But you got to wait, cat. I get mine first, okay? <laughs> but our, our, our autograph, I, I'm going to get that first. <laughs> oh. But um, we, okay, learned, we learned from Carly that you have made, I don't know... A, I don't know if it's a JV. I don't know how you guys have structured it um, with a major Italian winery um, recently as part of the Heritage Collection. So what we usually do with it, it's it's a sales and marketing agreement. We will be the importer. Uh, we we don't really go into other companies. And Marco? Uh, San Polo. San Polo. San Polo. Okay. There, yeah. and Marco Polo. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I love that that <laughs> was like the <laughs> mnemonic device. That we, just, we, we were just backyard in the pool. So... <laughs> Sam Polo. <laughs> no, yeah, Sam, yeah, Sam Polo. I mean, Can you tell us about that transaction? So it, I, it wasn't so much a transaction as because we don't own Sam Polo. I I have no interest in like taking over wineries. Absolutely not. I could never be Bruce Nyers. I could never be um, Harley Salagrini. I could never be any of these winemakers that have so much passion and create the wines. If they even if they say, "Can you buy us?" I'd be like, "Yeah," but the whole deal is is like it's still yours, and I need you every single day because. I can never be you. I need you 
to be the passion and be the driving force behind your wine. All I'm going to do is get it to Holly, get it to the right distributors, get it to Carly, get it to you, get it to the right accounts that will listen to the story. We're not just blasting out boxes to get depletions. We're very strategically placing these wines because, I mean, if you talk to Marlisa, I mean, you talk to her daughters, Carlota and Katarina, you talk to Miguel Angel, you talk to, you know, Derek Rolls. These people literally will cry and when they explain their wines, because they have worked so hard to make, and you're they're gonna all tell incredible. Them. Like we've had yeah. the opportunity to spend time with, you know, whether it was Derek or, you know, uh, Miguel Angel, and I mean, they're we love telling their stories. They're awesome people. They're super down to earth, and like you meet these people, and you're like, but wait, Miguel. I mean, he's a giant of Rioja. I mean, he's revolutionary in Rioja. Yes. Yet you meet him, and he's like, oh, let me hug you. He's and, a riot. You know, oh yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it's like, I mean, he's just. So so down to earth, but you're talking, you're like, I, I, I'm talking to you and yet you're like <laughs> wanting to give me a hug. And and like they, what? They, yeah. Very down to earth yeah. people. And we are very interested in the business of wine on the show and the trade of wine because Holly works for the second largest distributor, Republic National Distributing Company, a company with a lot of big words in their name. That's great. <laughs> I wish they were like Trinquero or Brazelli's, like our companies, keep it streamlined, keep it streamlined. <laughs> or, you know, uh, was it, uh, uh, what, was the big, what was the big we'll Jewish we'll deli? Carnegie's, sta Boom. Stage Deli, <laughs> Katz's. I was like, which one? Yeah, the, bars? Okay, <laughs> there, there you go. Like Stage, Katz's, keep it simple. But we love them nonetheless. What do, do you feel that um, Italian wines have been marginalized in the market because you guys are so on fire and on all cylinders in California, what can we do for our people back home who cannot design a label? This is the creator of Taken. What can we do for our people who cannot design a label to save their lives, Carlo? I, I think you came from Nike. You said you had that, that, that stint at Nike. You worked for a major distributor. You understand merchandising. You understand the grocery shopper, soccer moms with that little window. They're looking for that cute They're end cap. Nice. Yes, what can we do for our people who cannot design a label? I don't know if you're trying to do that with Heritage Collection. I mean, mm. to a point, I mean, we, we express our expertise and our knowledge in the U.S. market. Now, I'm not going to tell Marilisa to change her label ever. We're going to say, we think these, this would work better. It's your wine. You can do technically whatever you want. Um, I think, you know, the combination of expressing their passion, their drive, the reason behind their wine or what they want to get across. And then we say, okay, you might want to make this tweak, this tweak, or if it's a legality on a placement label, yeah, we'll help. But I, once again, I don't tell experts how to be experts. Okay. I love, love, love. There was one example, I mean, it's from our Spanish portfolio, but I think of Abadia as a really good example. Of, oh, yeah. So Abadia de San Campio, 100% um, Albarino from our partner, Terescao de Andrea Spaixas, and... Um, I understood nothing of what she just said right now, <laughs> but she she went to NYU, so that's she's why. Well, she's she's a, yes. a fluent Spanish speaker. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I know you wouldn't think surprise <laughs> fluent Spanish speaker, um, but yeah. So they have a completely different label for the Abadia that's in Europe, and we have a hundred. Our Abadia de San Campio that comes to the states is a hundred percent estate grown. We select the blocks, and the label is this gorgeous, you know modern piece of art that shows the Abbey. And that is an example, I think, of where we were able to help. Work with them, yeah. Yeah, okay. work with them to, to create because an image people, that would be successful. And I thank you, Carly. You hit the nail on the head there. I think people want a sense of somewhereness. Yes, oh, sense yeah. of place Places is a huge places. part of our mm -hmm. ethos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think authentic, I love yeah, that, that authenticity you. buzzword. I mean, it's true. I mean, yeah, I'll be honest. I'm at the grocery store, and I see, like, okay, you know, you know, Uncle Joe's lettuce made by, you know, Uncle Joe and his wife, Mary Dada. And then I see, like, the bigger brand. This is $12 more. I'm not going to lie. I don't even really eat lettuce that much. And I'll go over there and buy that one just because <laughs> it's, if you want people, people are human. There's no one that can't relate to, like, some of these stories. I mean, it's, it, even if you don't like the wine, you're going to hear the story and be like, that's cool. You might not buy the wine, but that story has now been told and now will be echoed. And people have a respect for the wine, which is a win in my book. So, um, it's it, storytelling is is our secret weapon, but it's it needs to be told everywhere, and I think Holly will attach to that. I'm sure. Story sell no wine, and Absolutely. it's also at the core of what makes us human, right? Like yeah. storytelling is one of the most ancient, you know, human activities there is, and it really connects us on a on a deep level. So yeah, absolutely, and I mean that's where the, I mean, that's the beauty of wine. You 
fake a connection with the story and then tell it. And I mean, I'm Italian by background, you know, and so, you know, I have family who came through Ellis Island and, you know, so like you can make certain connections with, with wine. And so from, from my family standpoint, you know, I can make a connection with Trinquero. Um, but then, you know, it just gets bigger than that because it, you like the wine, you taste the wine, you like the wine, you hear the stories and you hear how down to earth people are and how genuine people are. And you're like, I want to sell this product. You know, I want like, I want to be a part of this. And, you know, and I mean, for me, yes, I'm a distributor and I can pretty much get access to as much of this wine as I want. But at the same time, I'm also a wine club member, uh, you know, oh, you're and always a wine club member. I, I am. I, so, yeah. So, I mean, it's like, I mean, I talk to your, they call me and they're like, OK, and I'm like, let me, you know, let me do this or, you know, so and and, uh, uh, you know, so it's like I signed my mom up for Christmas as a wine club member, you know, like Thank we're you, we're just like. Because when you believe, you got the, the, I brought that back from my visit. When, when you believe in the wines, like, you just want to be a part of it and you're passionate about it. And, and you know, that's what we try to do. Um, and, you know, and I try to impart that with, with any of my customers, you know. And, and so Mike, you know, um, certainly has remembered Trinquero from years ago. And I think there's a connection there. Your uncle is named Mario, right? Is I have that an uncle Mario yeah. who so. um, was faticat, which in Italian means do nothing. But he <laughs> stayed back when all the other brothers immigrated for work to take care of my grandmother. Mm. His day was comprised. the oldest? He was like middle child. Okay. There were six brothers. So Uncle Mario, Zizi Mario, stayed back to take care of my grandmother. When she passed, his day was... Four hours in the coffee bar, four hours in the <laughs> courtyard, and then I don't know how many, that's eight great, hours, great, 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 how, how many more hours we got. Yeah. The rest of the hours. So he was like, the he's like the little guy, <laughs> he's like the little guy that would kind of sit out in the courtyard, like you, was, like you go to Italy, or like I grew up up in Rhode Island, you go to uh, go the Italian section of Providence, and and you see the guys, and they're sitting out there with like their black pants and their white t-shirts on, and they just kind of sit there, and they pass the time, this and they're is... all like just kind of just sitting there. I mean, you go anywhere in Italy, any small town, you see uh, this it's... too, you know. It's but but I think Holly and I will agree with this. Our goal with this show is to hammer home that it, Italy is the land of wine. Yes, we've been marginalized by Madison Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> However, we are the land of wine, Carlo. We and really are. One million vineyards, 20 different regions, m hundreds of appellations, 2,000 native grapes, Carlo. Uh, it's it, more. More, <laughs> yeah. We, Is it that more, we, the, the, more than 2,000? And we really? actually lost a lot to um, phylloxera. Uh, That's what you think. <laughs> we still know where Carlo they are. Found them. Carlo <laughs> found them. You found them. Um, no, we, but... I just, one thing I do want to point out is I think the power of, you know, what we're trying to do at Heritage Collection, the fact that a family and a story can make its way from, directly from the winery and the family to us at Trincaro, you know, the Trincaro family that makes it to us that we then impart to our distributor and that we now even have, you know, our accounts being this passionate about the yeah. stories. I yeah. think that, I just want to show how powerful that thread is. That is so very that. powerful. And I think the essence of it all is that Trincaro doesn't want the sale. Carlo mentioned uh, in passing, he's not concerned with case counts. And uh, so I own restaurants and, uh, you know, I'm familiar with my distributors. And one distributor in particular looks at case counts. He's not concerned with case counts at all. He does not want the sale he wants the customer. Right. And I have tried to imbibe this in, in, in our staff, too. We don't just want to sell one pizza. We want the customer. Exactly. And, that, and I love what you're doing with Heritage, Heritage Collection. If every SKU is not on CaseWineLife.com by tomorrow morning, it will be. Um, please go to CaseWineLife.com for all Heritage Collection wines, among, uh, of course, with any Trinquero wines, too. We will support our people. If we can't support our own people, then what are we doing? <laughs> you know, and especially uh, Carl has been so gracious with his time here today. How are we doing on time, Jared? We're, we're 40 minutes in. So I do, um, I do have a rapid Q&A, if you don't mind. You may want to take oh, yeah. a sip of wine, Carlo. Real quick, this. though, on the okay. thing about yes, the sir. customer. <laughs> yes, sir. So my, I asked my, I always ask my dad, like, what did Grandpa Mario say? I never met my grandfather. He passed away before I was born. And I said, well, what did he always used to say to you? And then to him and my uncle. 
And I, after multiple four letter word expressions, I said, no guys, I need something that I can use. <laughs> and, and, they, and he said, well, you know what he always used to say? He goes, make wine like your life depended on it because it does. And that's the whole thing about that generation is they really put everything into their wine because they had to. My they, father said, don't be a quitter. <laughs> that's the stuff like that. Like, it's about that. Hurry up. Why <laughs> you, what are you doing? Like, like, they oh, sold dude. an apartment in Central Park to go to Cali when Cali was just a dust bowl oh, yeah. to make wine for you guys. <laughs> you have to support the Heritage Collection. If you don't, I'm subs- unsubscribe from my channel right now. <laughs> okay, and I want a thousand really, likes. Is this Italian guilt? Yeah. Like, it's, it's powerful. Yeah. I'm a Buddhist now. We're I'm not, a Buddhist we're now. We're just so. expressing our struggle. So. <laughs> like, yes, no, it's, it's all it's about fine. struggle. Break, don't, it's okay if you don't want. It's while, fine. While, you'll, while just while you'll just break my heart. You'll just break my heart a little bit. You know, it's fine. I'll just. He, he also used to say, he said, you make a ten dollar bottle of wine, you're going to sell it for five. When my dad told me that, I looked at him and I said, you know, he's lost it. My dad's completely lost his mind. You make a ten dollar bottle of wine, you sell it for five. This guy, he's, we got to get him out of the company. He can't add. <laughs> Right? And he's like, no. And I argued with him for like 15 minutes. And he's like, what do you not get? And I'm like, what is wrong with you? You can't get a calculator. I'll do the math. He's like, you're not doing the math. And I'm, I'm sitting there like about to explode. He on was, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Ooh, nice oh, I'm so excited. He was doing Typical psychology. Typical Italian yes. right there. So I'm sitting there like, yeah. no, man, like, uh, like math. And he's like, you're missing it. He's like, it's not about that $5. It's about gaining the trust of your customer. Know that your customer will come back knowing that they are going to get something that over delivers and they're going to pay for something that they're going to be so happy with and they become ambassadors of you. you well, and, and to that point, I mean, you have wines right here on this table that, I mean, we're talking about family run, family owned, estate wines, Napa Valley, single, vineyard. um, single vineyards. Uh, you know, you've got mountain fruit, you know, you've got, you know, look at that color. St. Helena. I mean, these are, these these, are 35 year old vines. Yeah. I mean, you have these wines that, I mean, what they are offering in this bottle and then the price points for them. I mean, most wines would be exponentially more. Thank you for reminding Uh, me. The quality of these wines. I mean, but that's the Trinquero family, right? It's like true. to to everything that you just said. I mean, they're not after like the dollars. They're like case counts, you know. I mean, so that's is that a metric? It, no, you hit it on the head because it's if you look, if we just had this brand, this winery that we built, it was a dedication to my grandparents. It, we not we're not making any money because I mean, Holly's right. The products and how we make this wine, the single vineyard estate kind of process, these wines should be a hundred plus dollars usually. I mean, if you think about those wines in Napa that you know are a hundred dollars, they rightfully so, and and that's their model, and they are very limited. But my grandfather, he never believed in making a wine that nobody could have. He wanted to share accessibility. Why make something so amazing and then hold it over here, say you can't have it? He wanted to make wine to be enjoyed with friends and family, and that's the whole thing. And Making a single vineyard Napa Valley offering, um, a state offering to our consumers accessible. Really, that's what we wanted to do. And we got to tell our story. So Beautiful, beautiful, Carlo. You have an open invitation anytime you like to come back. You have an open Zelly invitation. Oh, you <laughs> you got to come out. Yeah. We, we, will, we would love to. We're going to do a huge vlog if we do. Bring the whole team. Yeah. Yep. But we do have a rapid Let's fire play bocce ball. Q&A. We're going to do the vlog from the bocce ball right. We have a rapid fire <laughs> Q&A for my man, for my man um, Carlo. CT, what, what, what do they call you? They call you CT out there? What do they call you? Just say Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> They call me Carlo. He doesn't even have a middle name for us. None of my brothers do. You want to hear something weird? So there were, my mom called us the O boys because I'm Mario, Gino, and Carlo. Trin Carol, we all in to know. No middle names. Older brother, August or November 14th. I'm April 14th. My younger brother's August 14th. Wow. That's wild. That's, that's I, said, I asked my mom, I said, okay, me and my older brother. Okay, that's a coincidence. What happened with Gino? She's like, you made it happen. I'm like, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, unusual right. because most Italian boys have a bunch of middle, man, middle, middle names. I'm He's sorry. Just like Mario, Carlo, Gino. I know. I was, I was going to be a Dante. And I'm we friends still with Dante Mondavi. I've been like, we would still him, love like, you. God, I'm not Dante. We You're would Dante. still love you. But <laughs> 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 we would still love you, brother. But um, this is why I love Carlo and I love Trincaro. All these wines will be on casewinelife.com. 
especially the Heritage Collection that's doing so much for these small producers. And it's not about case counts. It's about telling stories and, 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 and spreading the wealth. So we have a rapid fire Q&A for my brother here. Who are better dressers? <laughs> <laughs> Who are better dressers? The Mondavi guys or Nickel and Nickel? Mondavi guys. <laughs> Carlo and Dante. They, yeah. They ball out? Carlo especially. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Like Versace, Gucci, Brada, what? I mean, he's always, he always looks good. He always he looks good. He makes the hats look good. And he, I put a hat on, and I look like a weird homeless Does he dude. do the pocket uh, thing? The, um, oh, yeah. He does. Oh, yeah. Jeremy knows how to dress, but the Carl, you're never going to Carlo makes, like, the sweats look cool. Yeah, he's very, he's like hip. He's, he's pretty just hip. Cool. He's, he's just a like pretty cool, cool dude. He's in, yeah, and he's the only other Carlo or? I know. He's the only in Carlo I know. Yes. Okay, all right, cool. Thank you. When do you think consumers will, re will realize that there is no silver in Silver Oaks Oak? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, there's no proof that there's not, first of all. <laughs> Thank you. There's no proof that there's not any silver in Silver Oaks Oak. <laughs> Have you ever chugged a bunch of Sutter Homes in and thrown the empties all over the entrance to Harlan Estates? <laughs> Uh, not Harlan Estates. It's too far. It's too far to drive. <laughs> How They're, far is that from your spot? Uh, it's well, you got to go up Oakville Grade partially. So, but um, I'm not going to say if we've ever thrown them anywhere else. So, okay. thank you. <laughs> Love the transparency. I was, like, I was like, I feel like I've heard some high school stories. That's I was going to say, I think we all have some high school stories. Really, like, we, like we, we have a vineyard next to the high school, the, our Central Park West, which is next to Doctor Crane, which like literally it goes football field road, Doctor Crane, and. You know, it's let's just, it's right next to the high school football field. Is that your high school? Yeah. What was the name of it? Saint Helena. Saint Helena. Okay. So you know, got I'm fancy just, with yeah, the name. Those, those, those vineyards I, they've seen a lot, so okay. I'm sure. Like, but I'm sure there's a bunch of high school kids. They're gonna on be Friday really night. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really interesting terroir. You know? <laughs> terroir. Yeah. Exactly. Terroir. Yeah. A bunch of uh, natural light all over the terroir. <laughs> Keystone light. Actually. Keystone light. There you go. Uh, you guys had the silver. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the transparency, Carl. We love you. Have you ever heard that Opus One throws shitty Christmas parties? <laughs> no. I haven't heard that either. Okay, cool. All right, thank you for your honesty. Have you ever walked to one of Bruce Nyer's parties with a bottle of KJ and said, hey, I think you should try this? <laughs> no, because... Uh, <laughs> I still haven't been to one of Bruce's parties. Why I are miss, you? I miss every, every invitation he's given me. I've missed. Really? Yes. And I feel horrible. Bruce, Barbara, please, can I come back over? Also, you're probably missing some epic wine. Some, so and you some have epic no food. idea. Oh, oh talk about. probably just casually, like, uh, Rabino, Just like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. It has verticals of Rabino epic. and Magnum that are, like. Good night. Epic and wine and food. Yeah. I mean, true. yeah, his wife seriously, is the, Barbara's. Food. Actually, I was just talking to some, my mom. I, I joined her, uh, signed her up for the Nyers Wine Club, and um, and uh, so she and she um, we were a Nyers family. Like I, I swear, like I thought that I grew up drinking Nyers, but then it was pointed out to me that Nyers didn't come to the East Coast till like mid '90s or so. Yeah. And but and, at any rate, but we always had. I felt like we always had Nyers in the house, and. Um, and so I just like when when Bruce and Barbara came, I totally fangirled out. I was like, ah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so but they're they're super cool people, and um, and but the the recipes that they do and it's for crazy. the wine club. So my so mom cool. was all excited. She's like, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do a dinner party. I'm gonna make Barbara's recipes and have the Nyers wines. And she called me again this morning, and she was talking about this, and she's all excited because she's got the the, the Pinot Noir and. She's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the recipe. Are they the recipe cards? Over. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I sent her the recipe cards that that we have as well. But nice. um, when you're a wine club member, they send the recipes. Yeah, they send like, you, like, whole thing. like you know, when you do the blog, like yeah. the Nyers blog. By the way, people, everybody, sign up for the Nyers Get blog. I mean, list. it's, it's Bruce's epic. mailing list. Yeah, it is. It's pretty awesome. His yeah, stories, their it. stories, and they always have. Killer can we, can recipes. Can Carlo? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just a fly on the wall. You guys. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, I'm sorry, I digress. No, no thank you. you. Nyers. We, we mentioned Nyers. I had to We love Nyers. We love Bruce and 305? 304. You know what 304 is? Screwed it up. So, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce is like the storyteller of storytellers. And I say, all right, Bruce, right, we're going through his wines. Because he was actually the first big name to trust us. And I say trust because he comes to us and he wants to work with us. I go through his wines. I go, Bruce, dude. Single Vineyard Carignan, Single Morved, you know, your Chewy's Vineyard Chard. 
we've never sold anything like this. And he goes, oh, Carla, don't worry about it. You'll learn how to sell it. I just trust you with me and Barb's hard work. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Mad props. Mad like, props. And I'm like, can I just hit a number and fail at that, please? Like, <laughs> why do you got to trust me? Love but it. that's when I was like, the weight on the shoulders was, it wasn't even on my shoulders, it was on my heart because I was like, I can't let Bruce down. I mean, look at this guy. This is his life's work. Yeah. So it's a, it's a different motive. It's a different drive. And during the pandemic, our salespeople, we actually grew. We grew in sales. Very because telling. Because of what you did. Mm -hmm. Because of what you did. Very because telling, of people. Because passion and because of that, you know, they, they were sell they didn't sell. We did they, a lot of virtual you know, tastings. They wanted to. <laughs> so. I attended one of your virtual tastings. You, Which one? You had just, um, like, played. <laughs> in the wine what? cellar? <laughs> yeah, you were in a wine cellar. You had just done, like, some Bikram yoga and we're like really sweaty. Oh no, I like, was probably just, yeah, I was in the vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I was like, oh man, this dude just came out of Big Room. I feel so bad he's got to do oh, this virtual No, but studio. this goes to the point. Vineyard, <laughs> vineyard work is hard work. Of and course. we respect we, all of the vineyard workers out there. Carl, yeah. we will never bash a wine on our show because we respect the vineyard teams. Vineyard yes. teams, like I don't work there every day. I have a vineyard in my house that I like play around with. My cousin's on the vineyard team. The, the, those people. That work in the we vineyards. will never bash your wine sorry. because of the vineyard teams. Doesn't matter if it's whatever X Y Z There's, wine. It's unbelievable. Yes, All we will never bash your wine. Are just, they're crazy. Mad props. Yeah. Love them for their diligence. So we have a couple more questions on this rapid fire Q and A. Uh, oh, Carl is very busy. Um, Real quick, this bring in the Chardonnay thing to oh, yes, Bruce Nyers. Um, so I'm not going to name names, but one of my older relatives maybe brought a magnum of white Zinfandel to the uh, the wine spectators magnum party one year. That was funny. That's pretty. Oh, uh, that's, who, I respect okay. that. That was funny. That's that. funny. That's pretty okay, funny. I was, it was, uh, there was a few okay, I'm laughing gonna, and then like, really? Okay, <laughs> so Bazelius doesn't have a corporate jet, but I will Uber him out right now. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you? So similar to this. Um, so uh, we had to do a presentation in front of the whole sales team at RNDC. And so the room is full. You, you've done like the statewide meetings. Yeah. The room's full of people. Yes, sir. And, uh, and so... Um, we had to, we decided that we were going to present some wines blind and people would have to taste what they were and, and, or try to identify what they were after tasting. And so one of the wines that we chose was Sutter Home White Zinn. And so honest to God, I mean, you have a room full of people who sell wine for a living and everybody, and we had like, you know, we had that wine and, and of course, so you taste and people were like, this rosé, that rosé, bandol rosé, like oh everybody, I mean, people were like, Stop. like, so uh oh, I mean, we got yeah. every, like, yeah, people yeah. were like, is this, the, you know, like, what, I mean, people were like naming different rosés, and we're like, <laughs> like, it's rosé, <laughs> it's, it's pink, um, that's incredible, you're getting colder, and you're getting colder, <laughs> yeah, it was awesome, yeah, it's America's first rosé, <laughs> Carl is very busy, um, he came out to the East Coast, um, he doesn't come here very often. We are so enthused to have him. I will be back because now that the, you know everything's calmed down in this crazy world, getting out in front of the people that you know sell our wine and you know consume our wine that's the most important thing ever. Awesome, thank so you. I'll be back. Open invitation every back. time you like to come <laughs> back. Uh, if you want to bring Har Carly, you can. That's fine. Well, yeah, but <laughs> I gotta get there somehow. Someone's gotta drive me. She's like, I hate you. <laughs> but we love we love Carly we lo we love Carly. Okay, so a couple more questions on this rapid fire Q and A. Did you say or do you say plum jack or plump jack? Like whoa, Jack is getting pretty plump. Whoa, Jack is getting pretty plump. My man. Yeah. Plump. Okay. There you go. I love that. Is Last question on the rapid jack. fire Q and A. Is it, like, is it like, it, P L U M P E S? <laughs> Have you ever called up Hundred Acre or Kelly Morgan's Hundred Acre? And asked for a bottle of 200 acres. No, uh, actually, <laughs> I know Jason, and my buddy used to be the assistant winemaker there. So, actually, one of the wines that he gave me for my wedding is their fortified wine out of Australia. It's actually ridiculous, and it's an etched bottle. Wow. Yeah, so, like, that's, like, 100 acres, like, really cool, just their whole marketing thing. And Jason, is a, he's a madman mastermind kind of thing, and his, like, whole little, like, tasting area is, like, the ultimate den. Man cave, like it is so cool. I so, do love Hundred Acre. My buddy Ross Bentley mm -hmm. used to work there. He, me and him actually made. Well, he's doing most of it because you know I'm here. 
made wine out of my vineyard this year. We picked the day of the fires. And get this, we picked Cabernet at St. Coombsville. Perfect day to pick. We pick only one ton because of the fire. Everything's going on. I go to get a generator for the optical sorter. Obviously, everything's getting used for the fire. I go on a fishing trip. We had picked a ton of grapes. We put them in my barn for four days. Four days. They're just sitting there. Grapes. Oh, no. What is this, Amarone, right? Yeah. Dehydrating them. We get Did them you have out. A fan on them at least. Yeah, there's like kind of a fan in there. <laughs> so we take them out. We're like, they're actually not molded. Let's let's crush them. We could not find any sort of like crush equipment. So you know what we did? You know the old wood cranks. We did that. Me and Ross did. We cranked old a ton. school. Old school. Whole cluster Cabernet. Wow. Oh God. We threw it because we threw it in a big oak punch and we're like whatever. But then we're like we can't. We gotta just do this, man. It actually tastes okay right now. We're like blown away. Is we're it gonna, crunchy AF? No, we're we're gonna put it. We're gonna we're gonna put it in jugs. Chew, and just call you it just jug like wine. chew on it. Oh, okay, jug wine. Oh, I like. Okay. Yeah. Can you allocate a bottle or two to these? I was gonna coasts? say. Okay, can we like vi- visit that here? We it's will. I will try. I will definitely bring it back because we're gonna do. We're talking. We'll do the five gallon jug and then the one gallon jug, and that's it. Like, <laughs> okay. I love it. Carl has been a great sport. Awesome guy. Humble winemaker. Baller. Love him. Um, last question on our um, rapid fire Q and A: Have you ever gone to the Ferrari Corano Winery and asked where is the Ferrari Car Museum? I, I'm not going to lie. When I was a kid, I swear to God, I thought there was Ferraris, <laughs> <laughs> and I always was like, "That's so cool." And my dad was just like, "You know, whatever, just let him dream," kind of thing. How far are they from your spot? Ferrari Corano is over there, and so it's like, I mean. If I'm driving, probably 15, 20 minutes. If someone else yeah. drives, probably a half hour. That's where, I, that's where I got married. Really? Well, so the vendors in the the yeah, vineyards yeah. at the proper those are party for Icona's vineyards. That, um, if I'm not mistaken, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yep. So, so and so and so you said the vineyard, the winery is 15, 20 minutes. How far is the Ferrari Car Museum? I don't know. <laughs> We're still looking. It's for just it. past there. If you go left around the corner, so. <laughs> this is this. Uh, you guys have been oh my god, so spoiled today. I don't know how we're gonna up the ante, but Holly and Carly, I mean these brainiacs, they're gonna figure out a way. Carlo, thank you for your for your time today. You've been so gracious. Um, the cool kids watch our show. Do they need to know anything in the pipeline? We would love to give them the scoop. Of course, all these wines will be on CaseWineLife.com, Heritage New Collection, Italian. and Trincaro. New Italian wines. Yeah. Anything you'd like to share with I our viewership? Parli Italiano. Poco. Sì. Everybody needs to practice their Italian because okay. more, a lot more is coming. So I am going to bring some things in that you will appreciate. Yes. Okay. So in the pipeline, this is very exciting. Yes. In the pipeline, the Heritage Collection has some yeah. unique projects, yes. Italian projects. Partners, yeah. Yeah. Every, yeah. Some partners and uh, everything we do, we will not overcrowd our portfolio. As far as like, I think like Palm Bay, I think Criminal those are stunning portfolios. Like I could just live in those. But I want to manage that. I have one Italian family to manage, my own. That is a nightmare. Okay? <laughs> sorry, I love you, family. <laughs> but oh, not sorry. I always you say you want to give love that, our those Italian partners families. the respect and, des- and attention <laughs> that I feel like they deserve. So we're not going to get like two of the same. So we're going to make sure Italy's covered. We'll just put it that way. And um, we will always look for those wines that have that kind of. Carly's going to hate when I say this. What? Do I, it's a drinking game. It's X an X factor. Drinks. Drink when you hear X factor. <laughs> Done. Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Done. Every, everyone's something, glasses. Something that sets them apart from the pack, and uh, we were going to continue to uh, uh, offer wines that are accessible, that will you know you know make you smile, that are going to make you want more, and that also we're going to educate. Est. Oh yeah. Are we getting? Stop it. <laughs> She just said one of the wines. She just said one of the wines. Oh, that's in the pipeline. But edu- education, we're going to continue to educate and you know spread the, the great word of wine and make sure that all these families, Italian families especially, obviously they get the you know, asterisk, the most important. Um, they, we're going to shed light on them. We're going to show people that you know this is not just glass and some fancy grape juice. There is some work that goes into these bottles there's some passion that goes into every bottle of wine that is you know second to none and the best thing about this industry is that you're never wrong remember that anybody who tastes wine you're never wrong it's that's why i got in the industry it's like good job it's like the coach's word you always win kind of thing you always get the orange slices after the game you lost (laughs) but that was on the club league that my mom paid for (laughs) 
But what you taste is what you taste. What you like is what you like. My wife's from Chicago. You know that city doesn't put ketchup on their hot dogs? Shy rock. Yeah, it's crazy, right? So, but hey, people love what they love. I love ketchup on my hot dogs. I don't know. I think they're weird. I do. So, um, Can just, we expect a transaction from Chikara in 2021? Transaction? I don't call them transactions. I call them... Um, partnerships. Not even partnerships. I call them marriages. Okay. Can, can, we, can we expect a marriage? Yes. Or, or a couple of them. Okay, we can. It's like a, there yeah, you go. They're, like they're, multiple, they're happening. Multiple yeah. partners. The, these guys don't rest on their laurels. That's what I love about <laughs> this family. They continue to make shrewd decisions. It's just insane. I, I don't know how many trees I had to kill. The pr- <laughs> Napa Sellers is killing it right now. What's the story with Napa Sellers before we close? It's real quick. It was the original five acres that the Frank and the Ron, uh, Frank family and the Ron Bowers owned, and we purchased that from them back in the late. 90s, early thousands. That was such a shrewd decision. Killing it right now, Holly. Am I wrong? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, what he said was Rumbauer. And now the sellers has a Chardonnay that is baby Rumbauer. A whole lot more affordable, all you Rumbauer drinkers, buy Napa Cellar Chardonnay. Yeah, it's, I mean, just to be named after the, the Kerner recipes, I mean, the guy was a legend. He really was. I mean, he's the, one of the only guys I've seen show up to, like, the wine auction black tie event with an American flag windbreaker and just, like, <laughs> jeans and, like, how's everybody doing today? And he's just like, Kerner, he's here. <laughs> he's he was, he, he, he's, he's just a legend, and, you know, we miss him. Uh, but I... Can I give a shout out? Yeah, um, absolutely. Like a brother. Can I do a shout out absolutely to like? Brother, I just bro. want to shout out to my little girls, Sienna and Leona. Sienna, Aww. Leona, beautiful names. We love you, yes. little little ladies. So, and my wife, Stephanie. Can't forget. <laughs> Steph, Steph, we love you too. Anytime you want to come to the East Coast, we own a bunch of pizzerias. Would love to host you. We also um, will take Carlo out, and he yeah. may not come home for a we'll couple host days. Here. But <laughs> yeah. He will come home. <laughs> but he will come home because he has two beautiful daughters and a beautiful wife waiting for him. And, and that's just how we are. We're Italian, um, open arms. And, and, and thank you. Thank, thank you, Carlo. Thanks for no, having seriously. us. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. Salute. 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 Salute.